Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Lucas and no, that title is not clickbait. Today I'm going to show you why I think the Digitech Distortion Factory is one of the best distortion pedals ever made. It's really neat because you have seven different distortions that you can go through. You kind of have full control over each one. We have gain, low, mid, high. Um, some of them don't even have mid control. Some of the distortions that we're gonna be messing with don't really have it. And it's it's very interesting. It's a very interesting pedal. Um, it has a cool carbon fiber paint on it, on the outer layer. Mine's is nicked up a little bit. That looks really cool as you can kind of see right there it's a little faded the actual name of it um it's um it's made a lot like a lot of uh, digitex pedals you have the i'm actually missing a washer right there just notice that you have the output um for the amp you have the one if you want to send it to a mixing board it has an ir in it and you have the regular in um you have your battery chamber underneath here um it's a fairly standard pedal it's really neat and we are going to plug everything up and see exactly what all these distortions sound like so we've got everything plugged up and we are going to be working off of the first distortion in the distortion factory and coincidentally enough it's based off of an ibanez ts9 and i have an ibanez ts9 so we're going to compare the two and see how close the distortion factory gets to it. And as you can see, I have everything on both pedals straight up and down. This is a clean channel we're going to be working with. Ah, oh, sounds nice and great. Okay, so let's kick on the distortion factory. The switch in it seems to be a little wonky. So let me see if I can get it to... Come on, come on. There we go. That's bang on a little bit. But it is on nonetheless. Okay, so this is what the distortion factory sounds like on number one. Let's see what the TS9 sounds like. This is going to be a very long video. So just bouncing between the two of them right there. It seems that the TS9 is a tad bit smoother. So let me kind of um, adjust some knobs a little bit here. Let's, um, let's actually crank the gain all the way. See, it's kind of hard to really match because since you have the stuff kind of, you know, low mids and highs are broken up on here. I don't exactly have that on here. Let me kind of attempt to match it the best way I can. I know if you turn that up, it's kind of a blend of, of uh, both. Let me put that right there. That's the mid frequency. I guess I could leave that right there. Turn that up. Um, uh, the low level, I don't want to kick the lows up too much. Uh, I guess we can try that right there. This is, uh, this is a TS9. Oh, let me match the level in here. I turned that up. Uh, we'll keep the level, we'll keep the level at five on both. Alright, clean, alright, distortion factory. Sub switches. DS nine, the distortion factory. So 
So it seems that the distortion factory it has a little bit more gain and it's a little bit more aggressive as opposed to the Ibanez TS9. The TS9 just sounds super smooth. That's just kind of what the vibe I'm getting from it. Uh, should we should we crank the levels? Let's uh, let's crank the levels in the game on both. And um, I'm gonna leave this right here for the tone knob on the TS9 because if you push it a little, if you push it past the point, that's when the brightness kicks up. And I'm trying to match everything as evenly as I can. Things a little brighter on here. Where are you highs? Let's turn you up. The distortion factory sounds pretty good on the, on the TS9 setting. I really like it. It's a little bit more lively. It has a little bit more gain than the TS9, but you know, you gotta get, you got this, this is a multi distortion pedal, you know? So it, like I said, I think it sounds really good on the TS9. So let's, um, let's go to the second distortion setting. So the second distortion setting is going to be based off of the DOD 250 preamp. Yes, I got that right. It's based off of the DOD 250 preamp. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, I reset everything up to noon and we're on the preamp. Let's see how it sounds. So as we can hear, it's already different. It sounds very thin. Let me bump up. Um, let me bump up some lows in there. Bump up a little bit more mids. Um, let's crank some highs going on in there. The gain. I think I'm gonna leave the gain right where it is. It sounds decent. Um, let me mess with this mid frequency real quick. Ah, never mind. I'm gonna leave it right where it is. A little more level. This kind of sounds more like a classic rock type of distortion to me. And it honestly sounds okay, but since this is labeled as a preamp, let's see how it sounds in the effects loop. All right, it's in the effects loop. I'll lower down the level a little bit because things tend to get a little bit louder when you're in the effects loop. So let's see what it sounds like with the same settings we had before. Crank some gain on this bad boy. Let's crank the gain all the way up. Um, let me see. this mode tell you to be honest it's it's it it does it well the pedal captures the dod flavor and mode it does it well i just don't particularly care for this dod preamp pedal so let's move on to the next one 
which is going to be based on the boss ds1 distortion i unfortunately don't have a ds1 believe it or not so we're just going to be testing the pedal itself okay we're on the ds1 model distortion from the distortion factory we are back in front of the amp and let's see what that sounds like <laughs> Very hot. It's, uh, it's very grainy. I'm barely even pushing the gain any at all. Let's uh, let's mess with the knobs a little bit. See if we can get this sound good. Mid knob is actually not doing anything, which that's very interesting. I guess it's kind of it's reacting to the real pedal. Uh, I think this is about as good as it's gonna get. Let me turn the level up a little bit. the ds1 it's just very hairy and very rah. let's move on to another distortion we're going to move on to number four which is going to be based on the pro co rat before we jump to the pro co rat let's see what the ds1 distortion sounds like in the effects loop so i got it in the effects loop already let's see what it sounds like I reset everything to five because I thought we were gonna move on to the broken rat, but I forgot about running this in the loop. All right, let's test this out. I like the DS1 better in the loop, but it still just sounds weird, for lack of a better term. Okay, now let's move on to the Proco Rat. Okay, everything has been reset to new. We are on the Proco Rat. Sounds okay. I need some more low end for, for dang sure. There we go. Alright, it seems about as good as it's gonna get. 
Procol Rat. Now the rat sounds all right. Let's all see what it sounds like in the effects loop. All right, same exact settings as we just had before in the effects loop. <laughs> doesn't really excel in the effects loop all that much kind of comes out being a little bit dark but let's move on to the next distortion in here which is going to be based on the metal zone the infamous pedal from boston lo and behold i do have a metal zone okay everything is all plugged up including the metal zone and uh, this is going to be the metal zone from the distortion factory Let's um, jump ship over to the real metal zone. Let me set everything at zero on this thing. I say zero, excuse me. Everything up at five. Everything is going to be up at five on the real metal zone. Let's see what that sounds like. Kind of sounds kind of close, just the metal zone sounds a little bit more raspy to my ears. Let me, um... I could spend nine years tweaking that. Both of these pedals are kind of set up in the same way, meaning that you, the way the knobs are and you can have access to everything. Let me turn off the uh, metal zone and turn on the distortion factory. See if I can get it to sound good. I think I like the distortion factory's metal zone more than I like the real metal zone just because of um, it's a little more it's not as a uh, values of the knobs aren't as extreme as it is on the metal zone so um, let's try these in the loop real quick all right this is uh, the um, source factory <laughs> Thank you. 
Distortion factory. Let's uh. Oh, I hate this switch. All right, let's turn on the metal zone. A lot louder. Coincidentally enough, I like the real metal zone in the effects loop a little more than I like the distortion factory. But it, the distortion factory nails the metal zone tone, which I don't know why they put the metal zone. They should have put the HM2. That would have been a lot better in my opinion. So let's move on from the metal zone. Let's move on to the next distortion in here. And that is going to be the Digitech Metal Master. Okay, we are now on the sixth distortion out of seven in the distortion factory, which is gonna be the Digitech Metal Master. So Digitech actually took the liberty of putting one of their own pedals inside of the distortion factory and the pedals are set up kind of similar. They both have that IR outlet you can use on the second jack there, which I don't really know anyone who used that that much. That was a very cool thing that they came out with back in the day, but I don't exactly know how many people use that, but um, let's see what it sounds like. We're gonna start with the distortion factory first and I think both the switches in here are not that great so uh, it's gonna get interesting. <laughs> Everything's up at five, which I'm sure you already see. Let's uh, turn that off. Let's go to the actual real uh, Metal Master here. Oh yeah, the switch. Oh God, this is gonna be terrible. The switch is even worse than this one. Yay, I got it to come on. Again, I paid like $15 for that pedal because the switch is messed up, but. Yeah, the Metal Master is a lot more harsh. Um, it does have a morph knob because you can go from like punchy to different things like that. This one doesn't have that knob, so that ought to be interesting. Let me jog this knob. I think this is about the best it's gonna get. Ooh, 
Very interesting. Um, I just realized they don't even give you a mid knob on the Metal Master. I guess, you know, who cares about mids, right? All right, that's off. Let's go back to the Metal Master in here. Let's make it sound good. The cool thing about the distortion factor is you can mess with the mids when you're in metal master mode as opposed to when you're using it on the real pedal. I don't really know which one I like more. Maybe the distortion factor because it gives you a little bit more um, control over it. Let's slap it in the loop real quick, see what that sounds like. Okay, everything's in the loop. Um, let's start with the distortion factor first since it's already on. <laughs> Ton of control. I guess I'll just leave it like that. You could actually use that. That would have some application um, in some type of metal context if you want to do texture for that. Um, let's try the real metal master. Come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. What is this going to sound like? Wow, that's like super scoop. It's interesting. Um, I definitely could sit here and tweak it and get it to sound better, but I don't want to keep you here all day. So for the very last distortion, we are going to be looking at the Electro Harmonics Big Muff 
Goodbye. I didn't feel like fighting with the, the Metal Master, so I literally just took it off. Out of, I just took it completely out. We have the Pro Crow Rat. We, or oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. We are, we're on the Big Muff Pie, excuse me. It's been a long distortion journey. Um, let's see what it sounds like. Eh, it sounds interesting. See if we can get the sound better. One thing I forgot to mention is that when you're on the big muff mode, the gain knob acts as a sustain knob. So the gain that you get, you can't really move. It's just a sustain knob. Very thick. Let's see what it sounds like in the loop. All right, in the loop. in the loop because it's nice and thick and it gives you that really good big fat doom sound Ooh, ladies and gentlemen we have made it to the final distortion this video has ran entirely too long we've had plenty of noises to distract us too sorry about that not really i can do about that so let's wrap things up on the digitech distortion factory so we have gone through all the different distortions on here do i still think this is one of the best distortion pedals ever made i'm gonna say yes and here is why you can get many different distortions from and you know on a multi-effects board like you know back in the day like a johnson j station or like a pod or you know like a, a line six uh, helix stomp you could get those from there and but those are really expensive but if you're just starting out as a guitarist and you're a beginner and you want a lot of cool pedals all in one this is a distortion pedal to get I, these really aren't all that expensive i mean they don't make them anymore so i got it on the used market what really impressed me was the TS9 mode, that mode sounded pretty good. I mean, from coming from a Digitech pedal that is modeling it, is a little bit more aggressive, but it sounded pretty good. I, I have heard worse models of the TS9 in my day. And the fact that, I mean, you get the metal zone, which you know, you can kind of geek out with, you know, I got a metal zone, no, no, which they should have did the HM2. Uh, I don't know why they put the metal zone in there. Um, the Metal Master is pretty cool. You know, we get two Digitech pedals. And one, um, if you want to play some Doom, the big, um, the big, the big muff pie, that one's pretty neat. I uh, wasn't impressed with some of them. I didn't really like the DOD distortion. I mean, the preamp, excuse me. The DS, the DOD preamp distortion that's in here. It got it right. It, you know, a lot of the models that it does, it, 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 it gets it right. So, yes, this is one of the best distortion pedals ever made because you get seven distortion pedals in one and this is perfect for someone who's just starting out they're just experimenting they don't exactly know what the term distortion means you know they're just experimenting you're still getting their sound this would be perfect for that because you can you have plenty of different things you can mess with you can explore with 
I you know I think this pedal is pretty cool because you can um, you know squeeze some sounds out of it that you can't necessarily squeeze out of the pedals that they're modeling you know for example the metal master it doesn't have a mid knob this does have a mid knob I mean it does have the morph knob but the morph knob isn't exactly a mid knob so what do you think about the Digitech distortion factor do you think it lives up to its name do you think and you know is you think it's one of the better distortion pedals ever made do you know so another distortion pedal like this you know that models a couple you know a bunch of different things and actually sounds even better than this if so let me know in the comments down below so you're gonna have to be out peace